Cleaning Nation, welcome to another episode of the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. As always, I want to start by telling you that you are amazing human beings. We do no advertising. We do nothing. All the good stuff I tell you how to uh, uh, attract clients, we don't do any of that stuff. We just hang out because you are an amazing community. So my new coaching for the, the week is just have the best clients in the whole wide world and they'll tell everyone else about you. You don't have to do anything else. Actually, that's terrible coaching, but I did want to tell you you guys are amazing. I really appreciate all the love that you show. The show exists only because of your support. If and when you stop showing up and needing help and growing your cleaning companies, I promise we will go away that day. If you're listening to the podcast, remember we have a YouTube channel that you can uh, see video on. If you're watching us on YouTube, take us on the road by subscribing to the podcast. No matter where you're at, all the resources you need to grow your cleaning company are all at growmycleaningcompany.com. We got free stuff. We got paid stuff. We got all sorts of stuff. If you really want to grow your cleaning company, growmycleaningcompany.com has the tools that you need. I promise. Today, we are chatting with Denise Christopher from Attention to Detail Cleaning. Attention to Detail serves the New Jersey area, although she doesn't have the accent. We're going we're gonna to dive into that with residential and commercial cleaning. If you want to reach out to Denise and her team, you can hold them at www.atd, I'm assuming for Attention to Detail, cleanteam.com, atdcleanteam.com. Denise, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Hey, I got to warn you and Cleaning Nation, um, I don't know when you're listening to this, but it is currently a Friday and I am feeling frisky. So the, the level of ridicul- <laughs> ridiculousness may be go up by 20%. If you're looking for serious, good business coaching, pick a different episode. If you just want to have a little fun and maybe learn something, uh, hang out with Denise and I for the next couple of minutes. What's going on in your world, sister? Well, I am coming to you with a little bit more advice. Uh, you've already taught me so much that you have no idea. Um, so I just had a, a couple questions. Well, before we have the questions, we have to do the ridiculousness as promised. First of all, um, what's with the lack of New York accent? You're in New Jersey. You should be talking very differently. What's going on? Are you well, lying I, to us? <laughs> are you a spy? What, 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 what yeah, are you trying to pull I'm on, on Clean Nation? I try, try, definitely try not to have that. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, actually born and raised in, uh, I was born in Staten Island, moved to New Jersey, and then was actually in St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, for 11 years. Uh, and then I came back to New Jersey in 2012. If you were to consume more than three alcoholic beverages in a four-hour span, would you start with the accent creep back into your vernacular? Possibly. That is definitely a possibility. <laughs> All right. Tune in next time for me and Denise, drunk on the air, uh, <laughs> trying to see if we can get either one of us to whip out a New York accent. Um, we'll learn nothing. Absolutely. It'll just be absolutely ridiculousness. Um, <laughs> so are you married? Do you have kids? What is this your full-time job? What's going on out there? I am married. I have three children, uh, ages 19, 16, and one years old. Oh! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Hold on. Surprise. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, is this a planned gift or a surprise gift for your family? It was a beautiful surprise. It took a little while to get over the shock. Oh, my goodness. Yes. A surprise. <laughs> and uh, as I was ready to deliver my uh, a one year old, I had to get my oldest into college a couple of days after, but it all worked out and I did it. So. You are my brand. I've got a 19 year old and a two year old. So I am, and I, sadly we adopted. So I have no excuse to be like, well, we didn't know. Like he just showed up. <laughs> we like. <laughs> Life um, has been very interesting, but it's just amazing. And if you want, uh, obviously you don't have to, but if you would like to share any pictures of you and your eldest, youngest and anyone in between, I will, I'd be happy to put them on uh, your show notes sure, page. So I have a good check out. Uh, we'll kind of, we'll kind of <laughs> maybe I'll even put one next to you of me and my 19 year old and two year old that will, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Again, I just don't have the excuse of it being a surprise. Like we, we, you, you and this kid go, I don't know with my husband and I, what it would been 10 years. What do you expect? Um, uh, it was a shock. I, I can imagine that would sound like an I understatement. All the way through. So I had to take uh, like a week off, but then I worked all the way through, um, uh, up and pretty much until I delivered. Oh, good Lord. All right. We, now we're going to go to the coaching because that pisses me off. We don't need okay. nine month, nine month <laughs> pregnant women cleaning houses for crying out loud. So obviously you need help, if not mental, certainly business. So let's see if I can help yes. you with, with one of the two of those. Um, what's going on in your business today? How can I help? Well, I'm currently residential and commercial. And what I'm looking shall for. Shall I boo is, and hiss and make fun of you now or shall I wait till later in the show? I know. That's why. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> All right, I will, I'll wait. I'll, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bite my tongue for once. It's never happened before. Thank for you. you, I'm gonna do it. Go ahead. Thank you. And because of your coaching and the podcast and everything that I've been listening to, uh, I listen in between jobs as I'm driving to jobs. I listen as I'm working. It's constant. 
So what I'm trying to do is wean myself out of the residential and do strictly commercial. And then your uh, advice, of course, is to pick your niche. I want to do strictly office cleaning. Oh, right. So uh, now here, the problem is the, with the residential, I am the, the steady income person in the house because you're also in the real estate business. So I can't just say, okay, I'm stopping and I'm going to stop right here and just forget everybody and grow the commercial side. Okay. Um, perfect. 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 So first of all, I'm going to give you some encouragement, not coaching, just encouragement to like set a baseline and then we'll talk, come back to reality. I'm guessing, and I'd almost lay money on, if you did say in 30 days, I'm going to fire every one of my commercial cleaners, maybe 45 days. I'm sorry, not commercial cleaners, residential customers. Um, uh-huh. I'll bet you'd figure it out. I'll bet you'd find a way. I'll bet you would actually grow faster than the the method I'm going to coach you through, which is less painful, but slower. So I want you to know you probably could, right? You'd be shocked what people can do when they kind of need to be creative. Does that make sense? So come from the place of, I don't like hearing, I couldn't, I can't. Ah, you could. You're choosing not to because it would be very painful and more risk than you need. And it's not the best way to go, but you could do whatever you want. This is your business. You create it. You could, you can double your prices, you cut your prices in half, fire half, fire these customers, do this with the other. This is your business, do whatever you want. So let's start from a place of you can do what you want. We're just choosing to do kind of the least painful path. Is that a fair deal? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So with that, I would agree. I would not uh, just start fire. I just wouldn't fire all my residential. I would selectively fire my residential. Uh, well, mm-hmm. actually, first of all, I need one more bit of information. Do you clean currently? If so, how much? How many hours a week? Good Lord, yes. Good uh, Lord. <laughs> Not just yes. Good Lord. Yes. So I'm yes, guessing more than uh, two hours a week. <laughs> some, sometimes it's 10 to 12 hours a day. Oh, good um, Lord, Denise. With, and, with kids and, uh, and a husband. It's seven days a week. And then the Saturday and Sunday are a little bit less. Actually, a lot less, but still it's seven days a week. But yes. So, All right. So we, in income wise, <laughs> how are you doing? Are you, you, you tight? You making income's no, good? No, it's. it's it, income is good. I, I'm happy with it. There is definitely some accounts that I, I price too low, which is a common early on mistake. Uh, so those would be the ones I would say, okay, we're, we're you know, putting it up a little bit or I'll see you later right now. Or do I just say, okay, I'll see you later. You know, I don't know. Well, we're going to go through that. But you, so what I hear you saying is if your income were to drop to zero, that would be very detrimental for the Christopher household. But if it dropped by yeah. 10, 20%, you wouldn't go out of business. It would just be not fun. Correct. Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't think we're going to drop it at all. I just want you to be okay with like, okay, if it dropped 20%, we're still fine because it'll give you the, f- the courage to do the things you need to do that won't drop your income at all, but you'll have that fear. All right. Wow. All right. I'm going to give you the same spiel I just gave one of my one-on-one clients. Uh, I want to give her a shout out, but it's kind of private, so I won't. Uh, you know who you are, okay. young lady, because you'll go, you should listen to this podcast going, he gave me the same thing just, just last week. <laughs> um, you know who you are. Um, okay. So first and foremost, we cannot have you working seven days a week, period, end of sentence, period, period, period. Even if we don't care about Denise, we hate her guts. She's our slave. We couldn't care less about her. Um, we only care about the business and making money. Even so we cannot burn out the owner of the business by working them seven days a week cleaning period, end of sentence. We need to cut that period, like immediately. It's just, you can't do that. Uh, I don't even like, uh, so I'm assuming the seven days a week are commercial. The Saturday, Sundays are commercial gigs. Yes, it is. It's a restaurant. Okay. Um, and the Clean Nation, Denise, always think twice about uh, cleaning restaurants. They Oftentimes, you got to come in at midnight or 2 a.m. or whenever they close if they serve alcohol. Uh, often, they want seven days a week. Good news is seven days a week, not cheap. Uh, coming in 2 a.m., not cheap. Bad news is it's seven days a week, and when someone loses a key or sets off an alarm at 2 a.m., you get the call. Super not fun. Yeah. So, A, yeah, and I'm learning. how many restaurants do you have? How many, how many seven-day week counts do you have? It's actually seven days a week. The restaurant is just on Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, and then I have other commercial accounts that are every other week. And then one is every week. So do you but only they have are all, one uh, account? That's, they're not all office. But you have one account that's seven days a week. That's it? No, um, I don't have one account that's seven days a week at all. Um, they're pretty much one day a week, except the restaurant is Saturday and Sunday every week. Okay. So them I would fire immediately. Um, okay. That's just, it's, you can't work seven days a week. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, um, the, 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 on restaurants or seven day a week accounts or weekend accounts either have 20 or have none. 
If you get one's the okay. worst number because now you never get time off. And it's not, if you have 20 of them, two things happen. One, you're getting paid, right? So you're like, Hey, I'm, at least I'm making a lot of money Two, You can have the yeah. resources to have other people and you have the money to deal with that kind of a headache. I don't know what you're getting paid, but if you're only cleaning two days a week and it's the worst two days, it can't be that much. Mm-hmm. You get rid of them. Um, unless it's just, it some, isn't. It isn't, but okay. fire them immediately. Um, okay. period. Just fire them. Um, no hard feeling. I thought there were at least seven days. So it's like a two or three or $4,000 a month account. If it's only two days a week, I'm no. guessing it's not even a thousand bucks. Nope. Okay. They got to go. Even if it was a thousand dollars, if you're making 50% margin, that's only 500. Assuming there's no overhead. That's it's like 150 bucks a weekend to ruin your life. Like it's just, it's not enough yeah. cash. Immediately tell them. I know. We can't do on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah, okay. So I give you permission, whatever you need to blessing. I will knight you, sir you know, ma'am in charge of your own future, call those kind people and say, Hey, we can't do this anymore. It's just, it's not for us first and foremost. Gotcha. Uh, and never take on another seven day account or a weekend account, unless you're going to get enough of them where it makes sense. And you can pool resources that are going to, um, allow you to do that and be able to take care of them. Right. You can't take good care of a seven day week account when it's Sunday and you're like, good Lord, I've worked every day for the last 41 days. And now this, there's a problem here and I need to take good care of them. You're not able to do that. You need time to recharge to take good care of them. I find it frustrating too, because the people who are there during the week, uh, I find issues and you know, now I'm there to clean it. So. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so they have a week cleaners and th- those yeah. cleaners are like, I'm not coming on the weekend. Are you out of your mind? So they're like, Oh, we'll just get, Oh, good Lord. No, no, no. They got to go. I th- just, I'm okay. getting angry. Uh, yeah. They got to go. Perfect. So first and foremost, I've got like five steps here. First and foremost, selective fire. Um, so no, we're not just going to fire all residential. We are going to get you to five days a week period. Um, that we can't have you working 12 hours a day, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind mm-hmm. when you're cleaning, who's paying the bills, who's looking at the P and L who's bidding new customers, who's putting together bids and doing sales, who's putting together marketing, who's buying supplies, who's driving, who's doing, who's paying the insurance, who's making sure. I mean, there's just a thousand things that need to be done. You're like, well, I clean 50 hours a week. I've got a family. Yep. I, I, my body is, has this weird thing where if I don't turn it off for eight hours a night, it stops functioning. Um, and I'm going to clean. I mean, that's just crazy talk. So first and foremost, okay. the, the weekend folks got to go second. You got to quit cleaning. Got to, 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 I'll just say it again. Got it. You can't clean anymore. Um, you're just never okay. going to grow your business. You're not making any money. Um, are you cleaning? Cause you have been unable to hire people or wh- why are you cleaning? Control issues. Um, let it, that go. We, I, yeah, I, I did bring in two part-time people uh, helping Good. me, Good. Uh, and they come in with me to, to work some jobs, um, and I've realized through that and your coaching that I can now, okay, this could be one team, or I could hire one one more, but again, it's getting away from the residential, getting trying to get to the commercial. So we're not so, even there yet. That's step two. We're on step one. Your, your, your okay. house is not in order, right? Your house is on fire, and you're like, I'm thinking about redoing the kitchen. It's like, no, no, no. We'll yeah. put the fire out, and yeah. then we'll talk about the kitchen. But until we – actually, we'll put out the fire. We'll fix the fire damage, and then we talk about the kitchen. But right now, this is not the time to conversate about your ugly kitchen. Um, God uh-huh. forbid. I'm sure your kitchen's lovely, by the way. How dare I? So, <laughs> so the fire that needs to be put out before any real conversation can be had is you have got to work 8 to 5 Monday through Friday – period. And if that means you fire people, if that means you hire people, if that means you hire people and just put them to the, your the accounts that you don't like, whatever, this is more of a psychological thing. I could give you all the coaching that you need. That's not what's going to help. What's going to help is you doing something you believe in. So the way I do it is... People, I, yeah, people, go ahead. A lot of... I thought it was me giving up the money, but again, through what you your, your podcast, I now understand the money side of it. And yes, I do need to... Uh, pull back. Yes. This is 100% an emotional problem. That's not true. 97% an emotional problem, 3% a a finance problem. So Uh first and foremost, good Lord, if all I do today is get you to fire that two day week weekend customer and have you spend that time with your two year old, that's never going to be two again, as you well know, and your husband who hopefully likes you and hopefully you like him. um, I'll, (laughs) this whole day will have been worthwhile. That said, start with that. Then we selectively fire. First, the people that don't pay. Do you have anyone that you beg for money? They're always paying late. They're paying. You can't collect. Do you have any of those? Never. Nope. Perfect. So we, that we, moving on. No profit. The people that you're doing all the work for, you're not making any money. Um, there, I have a few of those. Fire yeah. those next. And don't fire them. Raise their price. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. The, the restaurant guys, or not the restaurant, the, the two-day a week, or no, the restaurant, the two-day a week, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, they get fired. There's no negotiation. Yeah. 
I don't care how much yeah, they're going to pay you. you. You cannot work seven days a week. It just whatever they pay you, you're just mortgaging your own company. And the the gall they have to go, oh no, we've got a company that we don't hate that does our Monday through Friday, but they're like, I'm not going to clean Saturday and Sunday. You crazy? So we'll give them all of the money and give you all of the work. That's cool, right? And you've right. been going, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. You, you tell and them of the, course, it's the, the busiest time is the Friday night to Saturday and Saturday yeah. night to Sunday. So <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever told anyone to fire a customer. It's always been, unless the customer's just been like abusive, but it's always been just yeah. raise prices, just raise prices. I don't even know what you charge. I don't even care. I don't know. I, if they would pay you double whatever you're paying, it, I would still fire them. There's like no, that. there's no money that you can, it's, it's impossible. So first fire all your Saturday, Sunday customers, which is one. Second fire those mm-hmm. that don't pay, which is none. Cause you it sounds like you've been listening to the podcast. You're using good uh, billing practices, which is excellent. Yes. Third, raise prices on those that have no profit or don't have enough profit. Okay. And don't fool around. The, the worst thing is this thing should be charged 800 bucks a month and you're charging $400 a month, but you're embarrassed. So you charge 550. You're just screwing uh-huh. yourself. Now what, now what are you going to do? You going to go back and raise prices to 800 again? No, you feel like a jerk. Go, rip the bandaid. Go from five to 800. If they don't like it, they're out. If they like it, they're in. Don't fool around with, this is a terrible account that just the worst. I'm going to make it slightly less terrible. No, it needs to be profitable. You, you have too much work. You, can't, you don't have the time to do this job. You need people to quit. So you want some of them to quit, okay? Gotcha. Okay. And when they quit, I promise you, if you raise prices 20%, which is generally not a lot, uh, A, it'll double uh-huh. your profit. Your profit won't go up by 20%. It will double because all of that money goes right. right to the bottom line. Your cost of goods sold doesn't go up. Your overhead doesn't go up. If, if, you're, if you're charging 500 bucks for an account and you're making not enough, you're only making 150 in profit right now and you raise that price 100 bucks, well, now you're making 250. See how you just doubled your gotcha. profit even though... So it, even if you, you raise prices by 20% and half of them quit, you'll still make more money. And you'll have left okay. less to work. So if they're not making money, raise prices and don't do it by little bits and pieces. If they're bad enough, you have to raise prices, 20 bucks a month ain't going to fix it, right? Raise it sufficiently. Make it a good, profitable account. If they quit, they quit. You need people to quit. You have too much work. You can't handle it. So that's the first thing. Right. Fire your Saturday, Sunday. Fire those that don't pay, that don't have profit, and that aren't polite. If there's jerks that you've been putting up with, just fire them. Or, or yeah, never, charge them a jerk. Okay. Yeah, okay, good. So all you have to do is fire the, the weekend guy and fire the, the no profit folks. Second, you've got to stop cleaning yourself, period, end of sentence. Do not go forward uh, with anything until you stop cleaning yourself. Hire however many people you need to hire. And I hate to say this, but say your worst nightmares come true and you do a bad job and people fire you. Great. You have to thin the herd. You cannot build a business cleaning 10, 12 hours a day. It's impossible. You can't even have a a life, never mind build a business. So if they quit, they quit. And you're still going to, I'm not saying it's okay. You're still going to create systems once you hire those people to make sure they do a good job. You're going to where they check on each other and there's the, you have a checklist you're going to create systems that you don't have to be there. But in that transition, if people get pissed and quit because the quality is no good, so be it. Okay. It's worth it. You got it. So these have to be done in order and you can't move on to the next step till you finish the first one. So do not okay. do anything till you fired the Saturday, Sunday, and you've raised prices on the people that pay crappily, which is your fault, right? You told them the price. It's not their fault. Totally is. Yep. Yeah. Started. It was thankful to have the work. And then, you know, the part of me where I'm like, I, I, thank them so much and appreciate that so much that I'm afraid to raise it. But I think that they think they would understand because now we're going into five years with some of these customers. And you just say, I can't afford it. There's no slave labor, right? You just say, I can't, it's costing me right. this much. I've got a two year old at home. I can't, I, I can't do this. I, I'm, I'm working a hundred yeah. hours a week. I'm going to drop dead. I can't do it. And if right. they go, I don't care. You dropping dead is worth me saving $47 on my cleaning. Then you don't want them as customers anyway. Good yeah, Lord. Okay. True. Uh, so and before we stop cleaning, there's one extra step. Stop taking new residential. Okay. So, mm, yeah, I, I kind of, uh, I, I've already started. Okay. But there's no kind of either you do or you don't. The one thing that you'll never yeah. grow into a company is having kind of policies. So set the right. policy, follow the policy minimum, no move in, no move outs, uh, only weekly or every other week accounts, minimum, minimum, minimum. Okay. You don't even talk about it. I don't even care. That's just not even negotiable. I would recommend yeah, if they I say the res- who call me, you know, they'll call me out of the blue and they say, can you come for a cleaning? And nope. of course now I'm starting from scratch. Yep, nope, yeah. I'm nope, done nope. with that. Okay. So that's the minimum. My recommendation, my coaching is that's not negotiable. What's negotiable, but I'm still think it's the best is someone calls residential. I just don't do it. I just don't do it. Period. Okay. Don't do it. I don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, if you want to find someone that you can refer to, fine. God bless you. Um, all right. Then once you've got that, cause again, we're talking about a, a leaky boat here before you start bailing the water out, we need to plug the hole. So plugging the hole is firing the Saturday people, raising prices on the people that aren't paying and stop taking the wrong account. That's how you plug the hole. Now that the hole's plugged, we can start 
um, bailing water. The first step in bailing water yeah. is you've got to stop cleaning. You've got to, got to stop cleaning. Got to, got to stop cleaning. Period. No cleaning. None. My last business was a car dealership. And a good thing is I could maybe change the oil, but I couldn't rebuild the transmission, do someone's brakes. So I never had that problem of, oh, and a mechanic quick, but I've got all this work I got to do. You couldn't jump in. Yeah, couldn't do it. So start thinking of yourself as, I don't know how to clean. I can't. I don't, wouldn't know what to do. I'd break someone. If I want this done, I have to hire. And guess how many cars didn't get fixed? None. Got it all done. Why? Because I, I had no option. <laughs> right. I could, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, I, I got to hire someone. I ain't going to get done. So I promise right. you, if I broke your arms and legs, this just took a nasty turn, um, you'd find someone to clean. <laughs> right. So don't make me come out there to New Jersey and physically harm you. <laughs> Let's do this nicely, shall we? As opposed to. <laughs> Man, it just took a really have, dark turn. We have drinks to be had. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So now you're drunk and it's not safe for you to be clean. Let's just have you drunk all the time as opposed to breaking arms. Um, so it's not safe to leave the house. You're going to have to, you're going to have to have your, your folks clean for you. Um, and then honestly, after that, it's downhill. Once you start, I mean, it's, we haven't even really talked about the transition, but that's I the know. easy stuff. Once you fire the wrong customers, stop taking the wrong customers, stop cleaning. Honestly, it'll be so easy for you to change because the next thing is to pick a niche. Um, we're running out of time, so I'm not going to get into it. Offices are not a niche. A niche is defined by they all have the same pain. So one office, you know, if this is a dentist office and this is a lawyer's office, this is a doctor's office and this is a uh, insurance office, they all have different pains. So we want to find uh, one similar pain and solve that pain over and over, right? So I don't just say gotcha. I coach business owners. Well, gosh, what I would help a car dealer do is a world apart than what I help you guys do. Uh, and the beautiful thing is all I do is you. So I can look any one of you clean nation in the eye and go, I know more about how to grow a cleaning company uh, than anyone else on the face of the earth. I've owned one. This is uh -huh. all I do. I've talked to literally hundreds, if not thousands of you. Um, I do this day in, day out. That's all I do is help people grow their cleaning company. You want to help a car dealership or a manufacturing company, any other company. I don't help anyone do that. Um, so we want right. you to get that place. I help daycares make more money, have less stress. Pick one. Car dealerships, right. uh, dental offices. And I'm better at it than anyone well, else in I the world. Thinking, I wanted to do um, like uh, the attorneys and do architect that type okay. of offices. That's uh, one yeah. or the other. They're, so find out who's got the most mm -hmm. pain, right? We're mm -hmm. we want pain. So if you call a bunch of attorneys, they're like, yeah, we've had the same people for five years. They're they're fine. Well, that's and you not just one, but you called a dozen, and that's the theme. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Bad niche. If they don't have any pain, there is no sale. What are you going to do to get them to change? Yeah. Lower the price. Uh, either they'll go, I'm not going to lower the price. We love these people the most five years, in which case you can't get any work. Or they'll go, yeah, I'll throw these guys out on their ear for a nickel. Well, then that just means they're going to throw you right. out on your ear for a nickel. So they have to have pain. Right. So first and foremost okay. is pain. And second is uh, quantity. So you want quality and quantity. Quality is they have pain. Quantity is there's enough of them that you can get the accounts that you need. So when you do, yeah. so don't go architects and lawyers. Interview them, mm -hmm. find out who's got the most pain, and just do those and solve that pain better okay. than anybody. And it's so easy. I promise you'll be the only one in New Jersey that goes. I help lawyer offices make more money, uh, be more be more efficient, have better. I help lawyers have better lives through facility management. See how that's very different than mm -hmm. I clean crap. Cleaning crap, low pay. Right. Yeah. Me talking to you exactly. on the phone, very very low wage. Me helping you transform your business, very high wage. So I don't sell talking to people on the phone, although that's the modality through which I coach. I, um, I help people grow their business. I can charge a lot more for that. Same thing. You're going to help people's lives get better through cleaning. That's the modality. But cleaning is low wage, helping them make their lives better, high wage. And I, you know how I know, I know? I know what lawyers' pains are as it comes to facilities manager. Why? Because I know more about owners of cleaning companies than anybody else, right? So you're going to get that same way uh -huh. with lawyers. You're going to know more about lawyers or architects or daycare owners than anybody else. And when someone else comes in like, hey, I'll clean up for you, you're going to be like, hey, I'm going to help. Uh, I, know your, I know your billable hours. I'm going to help that go up. Or I know how many hours right. you take off or whatever their metrics are, what's important to them. You're going to know that and solve that problem. Some other joker is going to come in and go, I'll sweep up around here for a couple hundred bucks a month. Right? They can't compete with you at that point. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I have been ranting for way too long. We've been having way too fun. I, they're going to be thinking, I think Mike had the drinks. Where's his accent? He's, he's obviously mentally impaired at this point. Um, so I'm going to be quiet, which never happens, and ask you some questions and let you uh, rock everyone's world through the lightning round. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? It's uh, personal and business, and I use it pretty much in my daily life. And it would be uh, always blessings, never losses. Tell me about Meaning, that. What's that mean? No matter, what was that? I just said, tell me about that. What's that mean? Okay. So no matter who or what situation comes into your life, there's always something you can take away from it. So even if you meet somebody and, you know, things weren't great, there's still something you can take away from it. 
somebody who passed away in your life, who was, you know, a light in your life. And it's so, you know, you, you hate that you had to lose them, but they brought some, so much to your life. Mm. Um, it's always blessings, never losses. It's always looking for the good in any situation. I'm guessing this advice came to you about a year and nine months ago when you found out you're pregnant. You're like, hey, good news. <laughs> It was actually a, a longer than that. It's just something I've kind of lived by. That, it's honestly, I'm making sport, but that's actually really uh, good advice. It's hard to hard to have a bad life if that's if that's the model that you go through. Question number two: What's right. the biggest mistake been. you've made in the cleaning business in your four years of, uh, of of being around this industry? It's everything you talk about: underbidding uh, and sometimes overbooking. Uh, you know, make sure you always have the time for the job to do your job well, or uh, or it's, you know, you're going to lose a customer and your reputation. So underbidding and overbooking. You know what? A, that's a great point. B, yes, of the 250 or whatever episodes I've done, that's by far the biggest. Guess how many times, I'm just going to give you the answer. Zero is the answer. The question is, how many times have I said, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business? And someone answered, bidding too much. Not one time. <laughs> it's always bidding too little. So if you're not sure, bid more. All right, last question. What's exactly. one simple idea, something easy to implement, Cleaning Nation can put into practice right away that will improve their lives or their business just a little bit? Okay, if it's residential, this is my advice. Sit where the customer is going to sit and be staring at your work. Something. Ooh, my, like this that. is my example. Sit on the toilet. <laughs> what do they see? All right, I got to know. Pants, <laughs> pants up or pants down? How, how much are we committing to this, Denise? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and what if I'm a male? What if I'm a male and the person hiring me is a female? Do I have to sit on the ladies' toilet or can I go on the man's toilet? We need I need details, you have to Denise. Look both ways. Oh, okay, you, you have to have sit to on both. both ways. Okay. Well, I, yeah. my, my two senses, if you're a lady in the fellow's bathroom, let's keep pants up and you know, let's keep this classy. <laughs> Just, you know, safety first here. All right. Look Denise, both ways. Look at the corners. Pay attention to what they're gonna see when they're sitting there. You know, and the, honestly, that's my marketing advice is philosophically sit where your customer is, right? Instead of trying to be like, well, I want more money or I want this or I want that. Sit in their seat and look at the world, both figuratively and literally in terms of there's dirt in that corner, a dead spider over there. And figuratively in terms of how do I feel? What's my emotion? So I couldn't agree with that more. I, I would even expand it to go sit in their, sit in their seat, both physically and uh, literally and figuratively. Denise, thank you yeah. for putting up with my nonsense and tolerating our Friday. I might just do this every Friday. Just do a ridiculous podcast. Um, <laughs> it's been a great time. Yeah. I've, I don't know if we learned anything. We had a ton, I had a ton of fun. Uh, cleaning Nation, if you dig that, check out Denise's show notes page. Everything you need uh, to grow your cleaning company, growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Congratulations, you are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.